now they're using drones <laughs> uh, to try to take Apple Maps to the ne next level. How will this work? Right, and let's step back a little bit. So Apple Maps, obviously the launch was bungled, but one of the reasons uh, that it was so you know, terrible at launch is because they had so much data that they were pulling together from different providers, some providers including TomTom Tom and other smaller companies, and they didn't source their own data. So a couple of years ago, they hit the streets with vans, very similar to Google. What Google has done, right? Right, what Google has done for a decade, and they're collecting their own data using camera sensors. But vans can only take you so far. They're very expensive, they require a lot of manpower, but drones, you know, they're smaller, they're under 50 pounds, they can fly around and really get into areas that vans cannot. So they've turned to drones. So they've gotten FAA approval to do this. Right, earlier this year they got FAA approval. Um, in August, FAA stopped requiring exemptions and approval to fly commercially, but Apple started looking into this earlier in the year. They got approval in March. And so this allows them to, you know, fly drones around. But the key here is they can't go over buildings or over people yet. So they're limited for the time being to regions that are not regulated, such as Amazon using the UK for some prime air mm. testing. But over time, the FAA is going to relax their restrictions, obviously, so Apple will be able to do more. Does Google use drones? Google, they've done drones some through their Skunk Works programs. Uh -huh. Uh, but other companies have done this before. It's actually a popular technique for really surveying. Construction sites use it. You can actually see lots of people flying drones with cameras over Apple's campus mm. to try to get a look at how far it's, it's gone so far in terms mm -hmm. of construction. So there's been lots of maps and construction related applications for drones in the past. Right, we're looking forward to that campus opening next year. So they're also adding some new features, indoor features, features for pedestrians. Tell me about these. Right, so beyond the drones, which is a long-term initiative to improve the data, they're working on at least two new features for an iOS update next year. One of the features would be indoor mapping. So over the last couple of years, Apple has been using Wi-Fi, this technology for sensors called iBeacons, to sort of map out high traffic, high volume places like malls, airports, big museums, parks and such. And now, or not now, when they release this feature as soon as next year, you'll be able to navigate these places with the maps up on your phone, just like you can navigate walking. Another feature is for the in-car navigation. So right now the Google Maps app will tell you, hey, you need to get in these two lanes in order to make it to your turn or your next exit on the freeway. Now Apple Maps will be able to do that next year. So how optimistic are you about this? I know you also talked about them assembling a new team, robotics experts, data experts, but do you think they're really putting in enough resources here to, to take on Google? What I can tell you is that it very much appears that Apple is taking this super seriously because Maps is not a financial element of the company. They don't rely on it like they rely on the iPhone, but it is a key platform as part of the iPhone and they really are showing dedication to this. Don't forget Apple had a bad launch, but that was years after Google's launch. And when Google Maps launched, it was just the United States and a few other places. And Apple has progressed honestly so much over the last five years, mm -hmm. but there's so much room to still grow to match Google.